Hi there, it's Anna. Thank you so much for stopping by. I wanted to just start off this video by saying a huge thank you to everyone who has subscribed. Um, as you probably know, this is a pretty young um, channel and I'm just so grateful um, for all of you for being here and watching. It's so exciting to be able to share everything that I'm doing in the garden. And so today I just wanted to pop in and talk a little bit about um, my seeds what I'm starting here in um, March and kind of how I'm doing it because I've changed around um, a few little things with my whole seed starting plan. And so I wanted to share that um, and then also talk about the single seed challenge um, because I'm gonna attempt that as well. Um, so first off, big changes in how I am starting my seeds. So I have been starting my seeds off indoors under grow lights, the normal way that most people start seeds inside. Um, but I was finding that because I have a toddler and the room where I had to have my seeds, I just wasn't really keeping an eye on them the way that I would like to. And my grow light setup isn't the most amazing. So my seedlings were suffering a little bit. I was having a few issues that I don't normally have just with germination and different things. And so I have decided that all those seedlings are going to go live out in the unheated greenhouse and I've actually moved them all out there and these seeds that I'm starting here in March um, are also going to be living for the most part out in the unheated greenhouse and I want to clarify this to make sure um, in case anyone's kind of following along and has one of these unheated greenhouses um, not during the nights so it is still um, pretty cold here we're getting nights in the 30s they're not dipping too much into the 20s Fahrenheit um, so around zero Celsius um, but they are hitting freezing which for like my tomatoes and peppers and a lot of the plants that I'm starting today that's way too cold um, but during the day it's like 50 degrees 60 degrees especially in the unheated greenhouse it really warms up if I leave the windows closed in there I mean it gets up to like a hundred um, super quickly so the daytime temperatures are perfect for seed starting. There's so much natural light. It's a beautiful, beautiful setup for the seeds. And the only trick to it is that I have to remember to bring them in at night, which so far is going pretty well. And it's really just a month. Um, my last frost date, I'm in zone 7A. My last frost date is about, they say mid April. It's usually like the first week of April. Um, so it's just like a month that I have to bring these seed trays in and out out of the unheated greenhouse. And for me, that's so much easier than having them up in the seed starting room under the lights. Like I'm always able to get out there in the garden, even with my daughter, I can take her out there and she can play with things and I can look at the seedlings and it's just natural light. It's so much easier and it's just, I think it's gonna work for me. And I'm kind of excited moving into the future about how I can do it, playing around with just starting everything out there. And even though bringing them inside at night is a little bit of a chore, it's honestly, it's not that bad. And it just saves like all the rigmarole um, of other seed starting. So that's kind of the biggest update for me as far as seed starting. I am playing around with this. Someday I dream of having a huge garden and a heated air conditioned climate control greenhouse and all the things. Um, but for right now, in my little garden, my little unheated greenhouse is, is working and it's doing its job and um, I'm excited to be utilizing it more. So I'm gonna get my seeds started. I just have one of these like big plug trays. I think this is 72 cells and it has a little six pack. So that's gonna be handy um, for organizing how I start seeds. I did a whole video about all the seeds that I'm starting in March, so I will link that um, in the description so that if you want to see, um, you know, more details about all of these, this actually, I am not starting. I got these hollyhocks the other day. These are like those black hollyhocks. Oh, so pretty. Um, these are actually going to be direct sown, but I just, I need to stick them somewhere. Uh, but got a lot of herbs and a few flowers, some vines. Um, as I said, check out all the details um, in the video linked. But now I'm going to figure out how and what I want to plant. And so I've started, and this is just like the best trick, I've started labeling and placing all my labels before I do any seed sowing. That way I know like exactly how much I wanna do of everything, how much space I have, and I don't end up with like 
getting confused, where am I planting things or running out of room, um, I can strategically plan out how I'm gonna utilize all these 72 cells and divide them up amongst all these seeds. So that's what I'm gonna do right now, really quick, write out all my plant tags and then place them and then I'll check back in. So I have all of my labels set up in here. Um, I'm not gonna be doing anything too different with how I plant most of these seeds. Um, I'm gonna do probably just, you know, a couple seeds in each cell and follow the instructions. The only one that I'm gonna maybe kind of adjust a little bit is the chamomile. I'm gonna be starting my favorite chamomile, German chamomile, super, super delicious chamomile. And I am going to put those in little clumps. So you surface cell chamomile, it has really small seeds. And I just wanna have like each little cell be a little clump of chamomile that I can just pop here, there, and everywhere in the garden. So I'm gonna sow those kind of heavy because I found in the past that they grow okay if you have a few um, plants close together. And then I can kind of have like a little, yeah, just like a little clump of chamomile. Um, the basil, I'll sow like three or four seeds in each cell, same kind of thing where you just wanna, I wanna have like that clump kind of aspect. Um, but then everything else is just, yeah, I'm gonna follow the directions. One thing that I am gonna sow differently is Siberian wallflower. This is going to be my single seed challenge flower. So the single seed challenge is this challenge that so many people have told me about and said I should join. I'm a little nervous too, because this has been kind of a hard seed starting year for me, but I'm gonna give it a shot. Um, and basically with the single seed challenge is you plant one seed of one variety and you take super good care of it and grow it. And it's just kind of about being mindful of like really caring for that one seed, which is definitely like, yeah, I've been having trouble starting my seeds this year. So I've got to be very mindful and take care of my little Siberian wallflower. Um, I will try to link in the description to the original video um, or some videos about uh, this challenge if you're interested in doing it. The fun thing too about the Siberian wallflower is that I actually got this as like a um, gift uh, seed packet and I have no idea even what this looks like. And as I was trying to think of what seed I wanted to do for my single seed challenge, I thought, wouldn't it be kind of fun to pick like a total mystery plant to me? Like I don't even know what a Siberian wallflower looks like. I know nothing about it. Once it sprouts, maybe I'll start to take a look at like care directions and everything like that. Um, but yeah, no idea anything about this. I'm gonna take one little seed. Oh my gosh. I wanna pick like the very best one. Let's get a nice like robust little seed. One seed. Here's its little cell. I'm gonna try to take care of it. Good luck, little seed. I hope you grow. <laughs> I'll keep you guys posted about how uh, that little seed does. I'm so nervous about this. Okay, so now that the wallflower is planted, I am going to sow the rest of my seeds here um, in their cells, and then I will actually take you down to the greenhouse and show you just the setup and where they're going to be living during the day. And then at nights, I just bring them in and been putting them in my laundry room. And that's nice and warm and toasty too. So that's a good spot for them. Um, but all right, <laughs> got a lot, of, a lot of seed starting mix just splashed up in my face. Um, but anyways, I am going to go ahead and get seed sowing. And now I'm going to put on the little cover. And this just helps to make sure that um, your moisture isn't evaporating too quickly. And let's go take these down to the greenhouse. So here is my little unheated greenhouse. And as you can see, we've got um, some different things growing in here. There's peppers and some dahlias and different things. And I'm just going to place my new seedlings over here and 
they should be all set. Um, it's just a nice space because I can really just keep an eye on things. Hopefully a bunch of tomatoes will be popping up in here soon. All right, so here are the seedlings in the unheated, or seeds, I should say, in the unheated greenhouse. They have a nice warm spot to get started um, and I'll just be keeping an eye on them. And as you can see on a warm day, it's toasty. It's um, 100 Fahrenheit, about 40 Celsius. So um, pretty warm for these seedlings, but things like peppers and my summer plants, um, I think will love uh, a nice warm spot like this. So thank you so much for watching. I really, really appreciate it. Um, and I'll talk to you in the next one. Bye-bye.